A very good morning, my dear children. Today, I will be revising for your comprehensive revision program. Are you all ready, children? Yes. In this video, we will be revising prose Alice in Wonderland. Poem, The Donkey. Literature, The Test. Grammar, Adjectives and Verbs. And finally, Informal letter. Now let's start children. First Alice in Wonderland. Synonyms. Curiosity. Read children. Curiosity. Eagerness. Now everyone should repeat after Miss. Curiosity. Eagerness. E-A-G-E-R-N-E-S-S. -E -S. Eagerness. Curiosity. Eagerness. Scamper. A quick. Run. Scamper, a quick run. Scamper, a quick run. Q-U-I-C-K. Quick, R-U-N, run. Delight, great pleasure. Delight, great pleasure. G-R-E-A-T. Great pleasure. P-L-E-A-S-U-R-E. -E. Pleasure. Great pleasure. Whisker, a long hair. Whisker, a long hair. L-O-N-G, long. H-A-I-R, hair. Next, antonyms. Hurried, delayed. Hurried, delayed. D-E-L-A-Y-E-D, -E delayed. D-E-L-A-Y-E-D, -E delayed. Inside, outside. Inside, outside. O-U-T, out. S-I-D-E, side. Outside. Accept, refuse. Accept, refuse. R-E-F-U-S-E, -E, refuse. R-E-F-U-S-E, -E, refuse. Suddenly, slowly. Suddenly, slowly. S-L-O-W-L-Y, slowly. S-L-O-W-L-Y, slowly. Bright, dark. Bright, dark. D-A-R-K, dark. Next Roman number, frame sentence children. You can also frame your own sentence, okay? First one, followed. Alice followed the white rabbit. Alice followed the white rabbit. Wondered. Alice wondered to see a talking rabbit. Alice wondered to see a talking rabbit. Next Roman number is annotation. Read children. Oh my ears and whiskers. How late it's getting. Oh my ears and whiskers. How late it's getting. Who said this line? The white rabbit said this line. Who said this line? The white rabbit said this line. To whom did it say? It said to itself. It said to itself. I-T-S-E-L-F. Itself. Next, answer in short. While listening to the story, what did Alice see? While listening to the story, Alice suddenly saw a white rabbit which was going somewhere hurriedly. Repeat children. While listening to the story, Alice suddenly saw a white rabbit which was going somewhere hurriedly. What is the spelling of suddenly? S-U-D-D-E-N-L-Y Suddenly. White rabbit W H I T E white rabbit R A B B I T rabbit somewhere S O M E some W H E R E where somewhere hurriedly H U R R I E D L Y hurriedly next question what was different about the rabbit that Alice saw. What was different about the rabbit that Alice saw? Answer. 
The rabbit that Alice saw was different from other rabbits because of the following features. The rabbit that Alice saw was different from other rabbits because of the following features. First one, it wore a blue coat and a red waistcoat. It wore a blue coat and a red waistcoat. It went somewhere hurriedly. It went somewhere hurriedly. Third, it could speak. It could speak. And fourth one, it had pink eyes. It had pink eyes. And last, it had a big watch. It had a big watch. The rabbit that Alice saw was different from other rabbits because of the following. F-O-L-L-O-W-I-N-G. Following features. F-E-A-T-U-R-E-S. Features. It or W O R E O a blue coat B L U E blue C O A T coat and a red waist coat W A I S T waist C O A T coat it went somewhere hurriedly S O M E W H E R E somewhere hurriedly H U R R I E D L Y Hurriedly. It could speak. C-O-U-L-D. Could. S-P-E-A-K. Speak. It had pink eyes. It had a big watch. W-A-T-C-H. Watch. Where did the rabbit go? The rabbit entered a deep rabbit hole. The rabbit entered a deep rabbit hole. Enter E N T E R E D. Enter a deep rabbit hole. How did Alice reach the Wonderland? How did Alice reach the Wonderland? Alice followed the rabbit and jumped into the rabbit hole. Repeat, children. Alice followed the rabbit and jumped into the rabbit hole. She had a great fall into the deep rabbit hole. She had a great fall into the deep rabbit hole. She fell on a heap of dry leaves and thus reached the wonderland. She fell on a heap of dry leaves and thus reached the wonderland. Alice followed the rabbit and jumped, J-U-M-P-E-D, jumped into the rabbit hole. She had a great fall into the deep rabbit hole. She fell on a heap, H-E-A-P, heap of dry leaves, D-R-Y, dry, L-E-A-V-E-S, leaves and thus reached the Wonderland. And the last question. What strange things did Alice see? Alice saw a small door about 15 inches high. She saw a glass table with a golden key. Alice opened the lock with a golden key. Repeat children. Alice saw a small door about 15 inches high. She saw a glass table with a golden key. Alice opened the lock with a golden key. So Alice saw a small door about 15. F-I-F-T-E-E-N 15 inches. I-N-C-H-E-S inches. She saw a glass table. G-L-A-S-S, -S, glass, T-A-B-L-E, table, with a golden key. G-O-L-D-E-N, golden, K-E-Y, key. Alice opened, 
O P E N E D open the lock with the golden key answer in paragraph describe in your own words the garden that alice saw alice saw the loveliest garden she had ever seen she longed to be among those beds of bright flowers and cool fountains but she could not go inside as the doorway was very small all repeat after me children alice saw the loveliest garden she had ever seen she longed to be among those beds of bright flowers and cool fountains but she could not go inside as the doorway was very small loveliest l o v e l i e s t loveliest garden g a r d e n garden longed l o n g e d longed among a m o n g among flowers f l o w e r s flowers fountains f o u n t a i n s fountains f o u n t a i n s fountains doorway d o o r w a y doorway now let's revise the poem the donkey so the donkey is a memory poem children so you have to learn the first eight lines i hope all know the poem well and this poem is written by margaret yes russell so without fail all should write the poem name if i had a donkey and he wouldn't go would i wallop him no 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 i'd find a little hay and give him some corn then he be the best donkey that ever was born once again which shall we repeat children yes if i had a donkey and he wouldn't go would i wallop him no 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 i'd find a little hay and give him some corn then he be the best donkey that ever was born margaret yes Russell. Now, children. Now, let's see the punctuation marks. If I had a donkey, so no punctuation mark there, and he wouldn't go. So contraction of would not is wouldn't go comma. You should put a comma there. Would I wallop him? Question mark. No comma no comma no. Full stop. I find a little hay. so contraction of i would is i you should write i apostrophe d i find a little hay and give him some corn comma then he'd be the best donkey contraction of he would is he h e apostrophe d then he'd be the best donkey that ever was born keep a full stop children and margaret say the spelling M A R G A R E T Margaret M A R G A R E T Margaret Yes Russell R U S S E L L Russell R U S S E L L Russell Literature the test Write a summary of the test Write a summary of the test Emperor Akbar conducted a test to choose an advisor all repeat children emperor akbar conducted a test to choose an advisor so he took off his cloak and lay down on the floor and asked the courtiers to cover him from head to toe repeat so he took off his cloak and lay down on the floor and asked the courtiers to cover him from head to 
two. Everybody tried, but in vain. Everybody tried, but in vain. Birbal took up the test and requested Akbar to draw up his knees. Birbal took up the test and requested Akbar to draw up his knees. Birbal could cover him from head to toe with that cloak and became the king's advisor. Birbal could cover him from head to toe with that cloak and became the king's advisor. Everyone should read along with Miss. Okay children? Yes. Emperor Akbar conducted a test to choose an advisor. So he took off his cloak and lay down on the floor and asked the courtiers to cover him from head to toe. Everybody tried but in vain. Birbal took up the test and requested Akbar to draw up his knees. Birbal could cover him from head to toe with that cloak and became the king's advisor. Now let's revise the hard words from the summary. Emperor Akbar. E-M-P-E-R-O-R. -E Emperor Akbar. A-K-B-A-R. Akbar. Emperor Akbar. Advisor. A-D-V-I-S-E-R. Advisor. Courtiers. C-O-U-R-T-I-E-R-S. Courtiers. C-O-U-R-T-I-E-R-S. Courtiers. Everybody. E-V-E-R-Y. Every. B-O-D-Y. Buddy. Everybody. Vain. V-A-I-N. Vain. V-A-I-N. Vain. Birbel. B-I-R-B-A-L. Birbel. Requested. R-E-Q-U-E-S-T-E-D. Requested. R-E-Q-U-E-S-T-E-D. Requested. Knees. K-N-E-E-S. Knees. Shall we read one more time children? Emperor Akbar conducted a test to choose an advisor. So, he took off his cloak and lay down on the floor and asked the courtiers to cover him from head to toe. Everybody tried but in vain. Birbal took up the test and requested Akbar to draw up his knees. Birbal could cover him from head to toe with that cloak and became the king's advisor. Now let's move on to grammar adjectives. So what are adjectives children? Adjectives are words that tell us more about nouns. Adjectives are words that tell us more about nouns. So what can you see here children? A bunch of flowers. How does these flowers look? The flowers are colorful, fresh and beautiful. So these words colorful, fresh and beautiful describe the flowers and they are adjectives. So children, adjectives are words that tell us more about nouns. Now let's see the types of adjectives. First one is adjectives of quality. Adjectives of quality answer the question what kind of a person or thing. It answers the question what kind. Example, Jane is a clever girl. What kind of a girl? Clever. Clever is adjective of quality. Upper was a wise king. What kind of a king? Wise king. So wise is adjective of quality. Next we will see adjectives of quantity. Adjectives of quantity answer the question how much. 
It answers the question how much. Example, there is a little milk in the jug. There is a little milk in the jug. Now answer the question how much milk children? Little. So little is adjective of quantity. Please give me some water. How much water? Some. So some is adjective of quantity. And next we will see adjectives of number. Adjectives of number answer the question how many. It answers the question how many. Example, a week has seven days. A week has seven days. How many days? Seven. So which is the adjective of number? Seven. Good. The spider has eight legs. How many legs children? Eight. So eight is adjective of number. Next we will see demonstrative adjectives. Demonstrative adjectives are used to point out or indicate a particular noun or pronoun using the adjectives this, that, these and those. So the demonstrative adjectives are this, that, these and those. Let's see some example. This pen writes well. That tree is very big. These boys are intelligent. Those men are lazy. Possessive adjective. Possessive adjectives tell us who or what owns something. And some of the possessive adjectives are my, your, his, her, its, are and there. And the possessive adjectives answer the question whose. It answers the question whose. Example, my mother is a teacher. My mother is a teacher. Now answer the question children. Whose mother? My mother. So which is a possessive adjective? My. Next example, that is your bat. Whose bat? Your bat. And the possessive adjective is your. Now let's see the degrees of comparison. We use adjective to compare person, places or things. The three degrees of comparison are positive degree, comparative degree and superlative degree. Positive degree is used to talk about the Quality of a person, place or thing. It is used to talk about the quality of a person, place or thing. In positive degree, comparison is not made. Okay children? Example, Ram is a tall boy. Next is comparative degree. Comparative degree is used to compare Two persons, places or things. Example, Ram is taller than Shyam. Here we compare Ram with Shyam. Okay children? Next is superlative degree. Superlative degree is used to compare more than two persons, places or things. Example, Ram is the tallest boy in the class. Okay children? Now let's see some degrees of comparison. Thick, thicker, thickest. Happy, happier, happiest. Beautiful, more beautiful, most beautiful. So we have two syllables for beautiful children. So, we should add more for comparative degree and most for superlative degree. Beautiful, more beautiful, most beautiful. Good, better, best. Adjectives can also be formed by adding O-U-S 
to the noun form of certain words. Example, courage. Courage, yes. Poison. Poisonous. Joy. Joy, yes. See children, we have added O-U-S to form adjectives. And adjectives can also be formed by adding A-L to the noun form of certain words. Example, person. Person is a noun and you add A-L. Personnel. Option, optional. Season, seasonal. Adjectives. What are adjectives? Adjectives are words that tell us more about nouns. Adjectives are words that tell us more about nouns. Write the degrees of comparison of adjectives with two examples. Positive degree, big, good. Comparative degree, bigger, better. Superlative degree, biggest, best. Positive, P-O-S-I-T-I-V-E, positive. Comparative, C-O-M-P-A-R-A-T-I-V-E, comparative. C-O-M-P-A-R-A-T-I-V-E, comparative. Superlative, S-U-P-E-R-L-A-T-I-V-E, superlative. S-U-P-E-R-L-A-T-I-V-E. Superlative. Let's practice. Find the adjectives from the given sentences. The bright sun was very warm. Antonio's daughter is so adorable. That building and these cars are dirty. <laughs> The bright sun was very warm. In this sentence, we have two adjectives, bright and warm. It tells us what kind of sun. Antonio's daughter is so adorable. In this sentence, we have two adjectives, Antonio's and adorable. The word Antonio's describes daughter by telling whose. And the word adorable tells us what kind of daughter. That building and these cars are dirty. In this sentence, we have three adjectives. That, these and dirty. The word that describes building by telling which. And the word these describe cars by telling which. And the word dirty describe two nouns, building and cars. Our next topic will be verbs. When I say verbs, what comes to your mind children? Yes, action verbs. Now let's see the definition of verbs. So verbs are words that show the action or state of being of a person, animal or thing. Verbs are words that show the action or state of being of a person, animal or thing. So there are two kinds of verbs. Main verbs, helping verbs. Now read the sentence children. Samir reads story books. Which is a verb here? Reads. The word reads is the main verb in the sentence. They are friends. Can you find the verb children? Good. Are. In this sentence, the word are shows the state of being and it acts as a main verb. So children, a verb that shows the action or state of being in a sentence is called a main verb. Now read these sentences children. Sham is driving a car. Children are watering the plants. In these sentences, the words is and are are helping verbs. They help the main verbs driving 
and watering to form sentence. Okay, children. A verb used with the main verb to complete the meaning of a sentence is called a helping verb. What is a helping verb? A verb used with the main verb to complete the meaning of a sentence is called a helping verb. Again, the helping verb is divided into two and they are be verbs and have verbs. Be verbs are am, is, are, was, were. We use am, is, are for present tense and we use was, were for Past tense. Clear children? And have verbs are has, have, had. Same way we use has, have for present tense and had for past tense. Let's see present participle. To form present participle, we just add ing to the end of the verb. We add ing to the end of the Verb. So the ing form of verb is called present participle. Example, cook, cooking, eat, eating, play, playing, watch, watching. Here, cook, eat, play, watch are verbs and cooking, eating, Playing, watching are present participle. The present participle comes after the helping verb in a sentence. Example, Hannah is knocking on the door. Here, is is the helping verb and knocking is the present participle. Next example, we are watching a Movie. Here, which is the helping verb? Yes, are. And which is the present participle? Watching. Clear children? Now let's see the subject verb agreement. What are we going to see? Subject verb agreement. The subject and verb in a sentence must agree with one another in number. It is singular or plural. If the subject is singular, its verb must also be a singular verb. Example, the bird sings. Here, bird is the subject and it is singular. So, the verb is also singular verb sings. Clear children? If the subject is plural, its verb must also be a Plural. Example, monkeys eat bananas. Monkeys eat bananas. Here, monkeys is singular or plural children? Plural. So, we should write the plural verb eat. Clear? And if the subject is I and you. If the subject is I and you, the verb must be in plural. The verb must be in plural. Example, I love painting. I love painting. Subject verb agreement. Every sentence has a subject and a verb which must be in agreement. Singular verbs agree with singular subjects. Plural verbs Agree with plural subjects. Example, my mother works at a clinic. Here, mother is singular subject with works as singular verb. They work together at the workshop. Here, they is plural subject with Work as plural verb. The singular pronouns I and you do not make use of singular verb forms. Example, 
I sing. You sing. Uncountable nouns take singular verb forms. Example, food gives energy. Two or more subjects joined by and always take a plural verb. Example, you and I are students. Let's practice. Look at each picture and choose the correct form of the verb that matches the subject. Cows dash in the meadow. Graze, grazes. And the answer is graze. Janet dash her school bag. Pack or packs? Yes, it is packs. The bunny dash the eggs. Hide, hides. And the answer is hides. Ships dash in the sea. Sail or sails? Yes, it is sail. Now let's revise the letter writing. So we have informal letter. Write a letter to your uncle. Thanking him for the present he sent you on your birthday. So you are going to write a letter to thank your uncle. Okay children? So first you should write to address. So to comma you should write your uncle's name. You should write your uncle's name. Suppose your uncle's name is Mohan. You can write Mohan. Or you can write your uncle's name. Okay children? Next address. You can write any address on your own two children. So here number 10. Second street Gandhi Colony, Kolathur, Chennai, 99. Next, you should write the date. You should write two near the margin and the address. You have to leave two finger space and you should write the address. Can you all see your children? Yes. Next, you should write, Dear Uncle, I hope this letter finds you in the best of your health. I hope this letter finds you in the best of your health. I thank you very much for the very beautiful wristwatch you sent on my birthday. I thank you very much for the very beautiful wristwatch you sent on my birthday. I received many gifts on my birthday but yours was the best. I received many gifts on my birthday but yours was the best. In fact, it will make me punctual and now I shall not be late for school. In fact, it will make me punctual and now I shall not be late for school. We all missed you on my birthday. We all missed you on my birthday. I pay my regards to aunt. I pay my regards to aunt, yours loving nephew or niece. So if, the, if a boy is writing, you can write nephew. Girls can write niece. Okay children? Yours loving nephew or niece and you should write your name. You are writing the letter. So you should write your name in the end. Okay children? Now let's learn the spelling. So dear uncle, U-N-C-L-E, uncle, I hope this letter finds you in the best of your health. H-E-A-L-T-H, -E health. I thank you very much for the very beautiful wristwatch. W-R-I-S-T, wrist watch, W-A-T-C-H, watch, you sent on my birthday. I received, R-E-C-E-I-V-E-D, received many gifts on my birthday, but yours was the best. In fact, I-N-F-A-C-T, in fact, it will make me punctual. 
P U N C T U A L punctual P U N C T U A L punctual and now I shall not be late for school we all missed you on my birthday I pay my regards R E G A R D S regards to aunt A U N T aunt yours loving nephew N E P H E W nephew niece N I E C E niece and you should write your name thank you children